Today's edition of PowerWise Design TV is sponsored by Avnet Electronics Marketing. Avnet Electronics Marketing provides customers with the right mix of technology, engineering services, and design support needed to introduce and sustain differentiated products in competitive marketplaces using the most cost-effective means possible. Through technical education, field application engineers, technical consultation, and design tools, Avnet accelerates customer success. Avnet. Welcome to PowerWise Design TV. I'm your host, Rick Zarr. Today we're going to talk about the complexities of switch mode power supplies, specifically those that are requiring higher current outputs for modern FPGAs and other applications. I have with me today my guests, Chris Cooper, who is the Power Technology Specialist with Avnet Electronics. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And also uh, Jeff Perry, who is the Senior Manager for WebBench Tools Development here at National. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Chris, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the issues that your customers are seeing uh, with power supply design today. Can you, can you comment a little bit about the problems that they're running into? Sure. Well, <clears throat> you know, we see uh, a lot of designers out there, uh, as you mentioned, trying to power FPGAs, other types of di digital devices, such as microprocessors. Uh, you know, trying to find power solutions in order to power these, and quite often, the designers looking for these solutions are the digital designers themselves. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily power savvy, haven't necessarily even done a power design before. Uh, your first generation tool of WebBench, uh, which addressed you know, the simple switchers with internal FETs, was a great tool, helped us out a lot in addressing those needs of our customers. Uh, but we're starting to see higher power applications, uh, such as, you know, for around FPGAs, larger FPGAs, large I.O. counts, trying to address those power needs. And a lot of those power supplies require external FETs. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, kind of interested in seeing what tools you guys might have available in order to try to address some of those requirements. Yeah, with the original WebBench, uh, can you give me some examples of where you use that tool to solve some of the, the lower power problems and some of the advantages that uh, WebBench provided for, for your customers? Sure. Uh, you know, quite often, uh, an FPGA designer, for instance, is looking for a 3.3 volt supply to power some I.O. Mm -hmm. uh, could be in the ballpark of about 4 to 5 amps, for instance. Uh, <clears throat> typically, input voltage is probably in around 5 volts or 12 volts. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the WebBench designer was great for you know, selecting the, the inductors, output capacitors, all the necessary power stage components, for instance, as well as any of the other you know, peripheral components that were required in order to adjust the output voltage. Mm -hmm. uh, it allowed him to go in, do some simulations, make sure, confirm the performance, make sure it addressed his efficiency and his footprint requirements. And also, you know, there were some neat features in there that allowed him to trade off some of those specifications. Yeah. So it really helped him in order to evaluate the solution. That's and it helped, also helped us in order to go in and uh, really show them how he could influence his design just by making some changes. That's great. You, you had actually mentioned uh, that the, and, and also the, the complexity of uh, power supplies and the, and the demand for higher current is becoming an issue and, you, and you're moving to external FETs. Um, Jeff, we've made some enhancements to the WebBench tool that address that. Uh, can you talk to that a little bit about some of the issues with designing with external FETs and the problems that engineers get into? Sure, Rick. Um, Chris, as you said, uh, we, in WebBench for a while now, we've had the ability to optimize for efficiency and footprint and some of the fundamental trade-offs that are made there. But what we've done with the new WebBench now, which we released a couple months ago, is we've really taken that to the next level. Um, in this WebBench, we've added pricing as a big factor, and so it's really now a balance between footprint, efficiency, and price. And we've also taken uh, the, the component selection to a new level. If you want to do a further optimization to your design where you really want to get into the details of, let's say, an inductor selection or a FET selection, we've, we've made the entire WebBench database now, component database, which is over 20,000 components available. Wow. And wow. Uh, customers can now go in and look at graphs of key features. 
So it's a situation where an ordinary engineer just really wouldn't have the time to accumulate all that data to be able to say, look at something like uh, the, uh, the power dissipation of an inductor versus the price for you right. know, thousands sure. of components yeah. at once. Yeah. That's neat. Um, what are some of the problems with actually designing with the FETs? You said that, uh, you know, obviously moving the FETs outside of the controller or mm. having the controller with the FETs ex external, now there's a whole new set of problems that engineers have to deal with with designing those types of switch mode power supplies. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Chris, as you know, FET selection yeah. is not necessarily a simple thing to do. No. And so in, in the new WebBench, we've, we've really gone deep here and, and taken a, a good look at the FETs and what's important. Uh, so for example, uh, the, uh, the, the VGS condition, which is one of the, uh, the criteria that we have here, uh, that's where you need enough gate voltage to be able to turn the FET on, not only just turn the FET on, but actually be able to drive the current that you need. Right. Um, so we look at that. Uh, we obviously look at just the voltage of the FET. Does the, does the FET have enough voltage to uh, withstand the, uh, the input? And then another one, uh, uh, as you mentioned uh, in our, another talk, Chris, is the induced yeah. turn-on check. Yes. Yeah, I mean, quite often, uh, I talk to engineers, they're not even aware of this issue. Uh, but, yeah, in a synchronous uh, buck topology, there is a condition where, you know, the top side FET, as it switches off, could turn on the low side FET, uh, obviously causing some shoot-through where the current can actually conduct the ground. Uh, and this, do, uh, this you guys actually do a check to make sure that... That we do. doesn't occur. We do. This is part of our, of our FET selection uh, check. And so if we look at the capacitance uh, uh, of the FET, Miller capacitance, and make sure that it's at a low enough level where that does not happen Great. and avoid shoot through. Hmm. Um, so after we screen the FETs like that, then we look at the, uh, the, the power dissipation in the FETs because, of course, one of the fundamental things is, is this FET going to be able to drive the current that I need and still maintain a reasonable temperature? So uh, as, as you probably know, the, the FET power loss can be broken down into DC losses or conduction losses uh, and also AC losses. And so for conduction losses, we're looking at RDS on times the current squared. And so to do that, uh, we don't just take the RDS on of the device. Uh, we actually try to plot that against temperature for each FET. We put that in our database. And then in WebBench, we go through an iterative loop where we say, okay, uh, what's the RDS on at, uh, at, at uh, ambient, and then we, we get the uh, recalculate the temperature again, and then go through a loop and say, okay, as the temperature is rising, that RDS on is rising. So we look at it That's in great. a more complex way. Oh. The other one we look at is the FET capacitance, and uh, as you can see by this graph here, this is not a constant value, okay? So if you take the FET capacitance, let's say as a worst case scenario here, uh, it, uh, it's almost 2,000 puffs. And uh, if we use that in WebBench, we'd probably lead to an overdesign right. uh, where we're using a FET that's too good for the job. If at the other end we say, well, we'll take the best case capacitance, then we do an underdesign, right. and uh, we're, we're underestimating the temperature. <clears throat> yeah, this is something that's very difficult for a design enger engineer to do, whether he's doing it by paper or with spreadsheet analysis, for instance. You know, how do you take all these things into consideration? It becomes yeah. pretty tough. And, and so what we did here is we said, okay, well, let's actually go ahead and, and curve fit uh, the capacitance for every single FET in our database. And so at that case, uh, if you're operating at 12 volts, we get the actual uh, capacitance at 12 volts okay. rather than having to take this worst case or best case scenario. That's, that's a lot of work, actually. It is. That, it's a, it was a big job. Wow. But this is one of the ways where we can get a higher accuracy result in WebBench and get, and get an optimized design. Yeah, that's great. That's neat. Um, I think, Chris, you had some example problems that uh, we'll look at in a little while in a demo. Did you want to talk to that a little bit uh, about the input-output uh, requirements? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, an example of where we see the need for a controller, for instance, in around, as we've mentioned previously, FPGAs or, or other digital devices, is where we have an input voltage of 12 volts, uh, typically, you know, a, a, roughly regulated input supply of about plus minus 20 percent and then dropping down to a 3.3 volt for instance for an IO. Uh, you know typically now in some larger boards we're seeing that current get up to about 8 amps for instance wow. which can be tough in just an integrated switcher type type uh, converter. Sure. Yeah. So uh, quite often it's you know beneficial to move to a controller with external FETs where you can actually you know optimize the efficiency and cost. So uh, but that design can get quite complex. You know, we've already looked at some of the sure. complexities here that you get into with uh, 
with selecting the MOSFETs. Uh, it even gets more complex when you start looking at the, uh, the magnitude of how many vendors are out there. For instance, we have uh, somewhere on the order of probably six or seven vendors on our line card that provide MOSFETs, and they all have multiple technologies. So, you know, trying to evaluate all those within a design to figure out which one is the best for your application gets pretty difficult. It could be very time consuming. Oh, extremely time yeah. consuming. Actually, we have a demo. Let's uh, run the uh, video on that, on a design, on this very design that we did, and then we'll take a look and see how that, uh, how that okay. pans out. That'd be great. Today, we're going to use the Webbench Power Supply Designer to create an 8 amp power supply design. Now, we have some constraints on this design. Our input voltage is 12 volts, plus or minus 20%. Our output voltage is 3.3 volts. And we also have a space constraint of 12 millimeters in height. We'd like to achieve high efficiency if possible, but we don't want to exceed our other boundaries of the design constraints. So let's try the Webbench Power Supply Designer. First, we're going to enter in our minimum input voltage, which is going to be 9.6 volts. Next, we'll enter in our maximum input voltage, which is 14.4 volts. Our output voltage is 3.3 volts. And our load current is 8 amps. Then we go down to Show Recommended Power Management ICs, and we click on that to generate a list of the best power supply uh, regulators for our design. As we scroll down the list here, we see this is the LM3150, which is one of National's newest parts it's of our simple controller line. This has got a variable frequency, which is going to give us a little more room to do our optimization work with. We'll click on the Start Design button here, and Webbench goes off and calculates all the components necessary for our bill of materials. Here we see the Webbench Design Control Panel. On the left side is our Optimization Tuning knob, and as we move right, we see charts, the schematic, the Webbench optimizer, table of operating values, the bill of materials, and the ability to get the design report. We're going to start out here by going to the Webbench optimizer because we want to try to get a higher efficiency from our design. When we click on that, Webbench goes off and actually calculates a number of different design scenarios and presents us with a graph of the trade-offs. On the x-axis of our graph, we see uh, the optimization index, we call it. On the left side is small footprint designs, and on the right side is high efficiency designs. Right now, we're in the middle here. The graph here shows orange uh, for footprint and green for efficiency. So as you can see, as you go to the higher efficiency numbers here, we go up into the, uh, the mid-90s for our efficiency. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set our efficiency knob setting to 4 which is a compromise between high efficiency and small footprint. And we see that our efficiency has improved. Now let's take a look at our bill of materials. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is our bomb. And uh, the first thing that pops out is we have a fairly large inductor. So let's take a look at how that inductor, uh, some more, get, let's get some more details about that. We're going to cl click on our Select Alternate Part button. And here is a list of all of our inductors with their footprints. On the left side here is a graphing panel. And here you can basically specify your y and x axes. And so as you recall, we have a height limitation on our design of 12 millimeters. So we're going to graph the height on the y axis. And on the uh, x axis, we're going to graph the power dissipation. So you can see here that uh, if you draw a line here at 12 millimeter height, below that is all the parts that are available to us. As we move left here, we get lower power dissipations. And so we're going to pick this spot right here as our sweet spot. So we see we have two inductors in that range, one of them 4.7 microhenries. And our target here is 4.3 microhenries. That, that inductor is also cheaper, $1.56 versus 387. So we're going to select that one. OK, next let's take a look at our FETs. This is a key component in every controller design, obviously. And so what we're going to look for here is uh, we're going to look for the best efficiency that we can find at the best price. So this is a graph here again of total efficiency versus total price. And these FETs are in pairs because this is a synchronous controller. So let's zoom he in here. 
on the left side of the graph, which is going to be our lowest priced parts. And we see here that the part that's been selected is not actually the lowest price. Okay? That's about uh, $1.44. If we scroll down here, we can actually find one cheaper at $1.40, and it's got approximately the same power dissipation. So we click on that in our graph, and we select that set of parts. Okay, so our bill of materials now has been selected. Let's go into our operating values charts and see how that affects our design. What you see here is operating values charts of things like efficiency, duty cycle. You can also let select other parameters such as the operating currents, the power dissipation in individual components, and things like the peak-to-peak -peak, uh, output ripple. At this point, let's take a look at our efficiency. And we zoom in here on the orange graph, which is our 12 volt input voltage. And we see here that our efficiency, according to WebBench, is about 92.9%. All right, let's cut over here to an actual board that we built using these same components that we did in our WebBench design. So right here we have the board hooked up. We have our multimeter setup, our electronic load, and our oscilloscope. Right now the electronic load is set for 8 amps. Our output voltage is regulating nicely at 3.315 amps. Our input voltage is at 12 volts. Excuse me, that's volts, 3.315 volts. Our input voltage is at 12 volts. And down below here we have our input current at 2.37 amps. Let's go ahead and calculate our efficiency, which is uh, the uh, the uh, output power over the input power. And we see that the uh, efficiency here is actually 93.2% based on our uh, actual board readings. And that compare, compares quite favorably with the 92.9% that WebBench calculated. Okay, let's take a look at the dynamic behavior of our design. And we're gonna click on the uh, simulation button. WebBench allows you to do several different types of simulation, uh, one of which is a load transient simulation. Uh, the load transient simulation we're doing here is going to go from 8 amps to 0.8 amps and back up to, to 8 amps. The dynamic load is now set to go from 8 amps down to 0.8 amps. And here we see on the oscilloscope, the purple waveform is our V out waveform. And you can see that that has an excursion of about 25 millivolts uh, on the upside and about uh, 20 millivolts on the downside. Now we see that WebBench has finished the load transient simulation. And we are going to plot the, input, the output voltage, which is shown here in red, against the uh, output current in green. So we can see here that the output current is going from 8 volts down to 0.8 and the output voltage uh, is hanging in steady here and has about a 30 to 35 uh, millivolt overshoot. Again, this compares quite favorably with the actual bench results. As you can see, in a few short minutes here, we have actually created a full power supply design, optimized it for our needs, which was a height requirement and high efficiency, and we've compared that with our bench results and gotten very good accuracy. So I hope that you will consider using WebBench for your design today. Well, that was a great demo. Um, it actually not only showed that the WebBench tool is capable of doing uh, the, the simulation and, and helping with the circuit design, but it also shows the uh, bill of materials as well as the ability to optimize the design. Uh, Jeff, do you want to talk about the optimization a little bit? Sure. Uh, these are the actual two boards that we used in the lab here. Um, the one on, the, uh, on this side here, right here, is the, is the one that we looked at in the demo. And that's a board that we designed for high efficiency, as we saw uh, in the video. The one on the other side here was a, another option that we did where we tried to optimize the design for small footprint. And there's a fundamental trade-off between high efficiency and small footprint in these types of designs. Chris, do you want to go over that a little bit? Sure. So in these, this particular design, uh, in the one that we did in the demo, uh, where we were looking for the extra efficiency, uh, we wanted to switch at a lower switching frequency in order to get the switching losses down. That's effectively how we achieve the higher efficiency. Obviously, you can see that there's a price to pay, and that's uh, for size. You can see that the inductor 
bears much bulkier. This thing's almost twice the size of the other one, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Also, you can see there's additional output capacitance in this design as well. Uh, to get to achieve the smaller size, as you can see here, we uh, moved the switching frequency from 250 kilohertz up to 750 kilohertz, uh, which allowed us to significantly shrink the inductor as well as get rid of some of the output capacitance. So you can see we could achieve a significantly smaller solution just by bringing the switching frequency up, but we do lose some of the efficiency in that particular case. Yeah, and the actual difference in efficiency uh, was about 4%. We lost about 4% yeah. of efficiency. So, you know, depending on your application, that's usually quite acceptable. I yeah. think in this application, we had uh, an output power of, what, around 25 watts? That's right. Yeah. And uh, so that 4% uh, savings is about uh, about a watt or so of yeah. savings, which is, could be yeah. considered significant in, in the yeah. applications, right? Yeah, it really sure. depends on what your priority is. Is it, is it size or efficiency, for instance? So that's great. Um, Jeff, do you want to talk a little bit uh, about uh, where you can find the tools and... Sure. And how, how you go about, a customer might go about using them. So Webbench is free to use. Uh, you just need to go to uh, www.national.com slash Webbench. Uh, within Webbench, you can use all the, uh, the features that we showed in the demo. Uh, one of the ones that we didn't show was the design reporting feature, where you can get an actual report of your design quite easily. It summarizes the entire thing. And also the build it feature, where a customer can get uh, one of these kits with all the components from the exact uh, design shipped to them overnight. Right, so a customer can basically just get one of these shipped right right from his simulation. Exactly. So, uh, you know, one thing that our the engineers can do uh, is if they contact our local sales representatives, we can actually provide them with a coupon and receive one of these free of charge. So, so I encourage them to contact our local Avnet people okay. if they'd wish to get one of these boards. That's great. And uh, also at National, we have uh, an analog university, as you know, online. It's uh, accessible from our homepage. So for those engineers trying to learn more about uh, switch mode power supplies that are unfamiliar with some of the things that we've discussed, they can go there and, and learn more about that. Yeah. I think also uh, Avnet has some resources as well. Yes, we have some technical seminars, which we refer to as on-ramps, uh, that uh, we actually have a power design training that's oriented towards digital designers that'll get them up to speed on power supply design very quickly. That's super. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for, uh, for joining me today on PowerWise thank Design you. TV. And I'd like to yeah. thank everybody else for watching out there and have a great day.